today on Santa Monica Update. Thanksgiving is a time of thanks. See how one Santa Monica business owner has been thanking the residents of Santa Monica for over 30 years. Construction is kicking up on Colorado. I've got the details coming up. What do cars like this have to do with the air you breathe? I'm Rick Boone, the story coming up. We have these fun, interesting, and important stories along with more news about the city of Santa Monica in today's show. I'm Tina Chen. Santa Monica Update. Your source for local news in Santa Monica. Santa Monica Update starts now. Hello, everybody. The world famous RAND Corporation has been selected by the Santa Monica City Council to help develop a well being index for our city. RAND will partner with the New Economics Foundation on the research and analysis components of the project. Both of these nonprofit research organizations have depths of knowledge in well being analysis, measurement development, city planning, research, and policy development. A panel of experts is expected to convene in January to begin the project. A data plan is expected to be ready next spring. In the summer, a beta version of the index will be ready for testing. Delivery of the well-being index is expected next October, and by mid-2015, the City Council expects to see a sustainability strategy for the index. The cost of the project is $650,000, which will expend about two-thirds of the $1 million grant won by the city earlier this year from the Bloomberg Mayor's Challenge. In order to encourage and facilitate biking in Santa Monica, the city adopted a bicycle action plan in November 2011. Now another aspect of that plan is coming into being. The city council has awarded a contract to create green bicycle lanes on two major routes through our city on Main Street from Colorado to Ozone, and on Broadway from 6th Street up to Sentinella. The green bike lanes on Main Street and Broadway will be installed using the same material and color that was used on the Ocean Park Complete Green Street project, which is still performing well approximately a year after completion. Work should begin the week of January 13, 2014, and be completed by March 30th. For 33 years, restaurateur Fred Denny has been serving traditional Thanksgiving dinners to seniors. Santa Monica Update's Gail Choice joined Mr. Denny and his guests for a very happy Thanksgiving. The seniors and family members who lined up outside back on Broadway waited patiently as Thanksgiving preparations were set in motion. From the kitchen to the many volunteers, this was truly a day of thanks. It's a tradition here in Santa Monica with Fred Denny that he opens his restaurant back on Broadway uh, for the seniors. And so Wise and Healthy Aging, our organization actually works with him in making sure that the seniors get their tickets and are signed up and then we help with the checking of them in. Thanksgiving Day at Back on Broadway was more than just a Thanksgiving dinner. It was a celebration with students providing entertainment and other surprises. It's three dollars a ticket and it's more for just we put the money toward uh, the raffle prizes that we have then drawings for. Back on Broadway owner and manager Fred Denny greeted his guests with smiles and pats on the back while in a very festive atmosphere. We asked him the obvious question, why does he do this year after year? Because I found a homeless person in my uh, restaurant dumpster 34 years ago. And I thought, well, you know what? There are people who need a meal. And I would always cook for 80 or 90 people at my house. And I said, next year, we're all going to gather and we're all going to cook and we're going to feed the homeless. And that first year, we had 700 people. We started out uh, having homeless dinners, but the population grew and another group started serving the homeless. So we pulled the seniors out and made it exclusively for seniors. And it gave them a little more dignity than sitting just in a food line. The family-like atmosphere stems from the fact that diners as well as volunteers return year after year, and some even stay on. We've had volunteers that were coming here when they were two years old and now have grown up, have children, and they're bringing their children to pass it on as a second generation of volunteers for this particular Thanksgiving dinner. 22 years ago, I came with, with a volunteer. My, I had just moved from New York, and I liked this idea so much that I stayed. I'm still here, and Fred hired me as a full-time from that event. 
And 22 years later, I'm still doing it, and I'm still enjoying it. The community has been very, very good to me. Uh, I have two restaurants that have uh, been in business for over 30 years, and it's a way of my giving back to the community. Uh, a lot of the uh, participants that are coming to the senior dinner uh, you know, 30 years ago were young and viral and brought their families and supported me to keep me in business. So it's just a full circle. Gail Choice, Santa Monica Update. Fred Denny is looking forward to next year's Thanksgiving feast. His partnership with Wise and Healthy Aging is guaranteed to get the word out to even more seniors looking to spend the Thanksgiving holiday with great food, friends and fun. Progress continues on phase two of Metro's Expo Line, the light rail project that will link Santa Monica to downtown Los Angeles. Recently, construction has intensified on Colorado Avenue between 17th and 5th. Unfortunately, so has traffic. Reporter Daniel Farias has a story on the latest developments. It's been 60 years since a passenger rail line has linked Santa Monica to Los Angeles, but at long last, Metro's Expo Line is well on its way. What began in downtown LA back in 2006 is now entering its final stages as the home stretch of the 15 mile light rail line is currently under construction on Colorado Avenue. This is exciting news, but unfortunately it does come with some fine print. And if you've driven down Colorado lately, you know what I'm talking about, traffic. Both the construction and the traffic has intensified on this stretch of Colorado Avenue between 17th and 5th Street as it undergoes a major overhaul. Construction crews have now placed down the K-rail barriers down the center of the road, which will pave the way for laying down the track, which brings us that much closer to project completion. The work zone in the center of Colorado Avenue has reduced the number of lanes down to one in each direction. This is a permanent change, since once the work is done, the train itself will travel down the center of the road both to and from its new terminus at 5th and Colorado. In addition, drivers will need to note that left turns from Colorado Avenue will no longer be possible, and pedestrians may only cross the street at signaled intersections. Construction crews are doing their best to mitigate traffic by reserving major closures for off-peak or overnight times. However, drivers need to use caution and plan effectively to avoid major delays when driving on Colorado or the surrounding streets. Most importantly, keep a sharp eye out for pedestrians and cyclists as they too are adjusting to the changes. The construction, if you look around, has caused all kinds of problems for not only us, but for our customers. There's no parking. It's filthy. Our, I mean, our flower beds have died. It's dirt, dust and dirt everywhere. But in the long run, I know this is going to be a wonderful thing for the city and, and bringing new people into the city. And it's going to be great in the long run. Overall, Expo Phase 2 construction is progressing well and should be completed in late 2015 with the line operational in early 2016. Okay, so we have to endure these growing pains just a little while longer, but keep your eye on the prize. In the end, it's going to be worth it. I mean, this street is going to boast several major upgrades and improvements, not the least of which is a brand new zero emission method of traveling between here and downtown LA. Now, remember to do your part in mitigating the traffic in this area. Just avoid it altogether if you can. But if you must come down here, be sure to give yourself some extra time and pick an alternate route whenever possible to get to where you're going. For Santa Monica Update, I'm Daniel Farias. If you would like more information about the Expo Line Phase 2 project, visit buildexpo.org. And for the most updated information on construction traffic in Santa Monica, check out the city's Know Before You Go website at smgov.net slash kbug. The 8th Annual Alt Car Expo came into town last summer to give residents ideas on how to save our environment while showing off the hottest new styles and alternative fuel vehicles. Reporter Rick Boone took us along for the ride. They are considered the vehicles of tomorrow we use today. They are. A lot of them have great possibilities as well as good stylings. These alternative fuel vehicles are being shown off at the Civic Center as the new technology for the road that can save our environment. This showcase gives you a look at the largest collection of electric, hydrogen, propane, natural gas, biodiesel and hybrid vehicles on the West Coast. More than half of our fleet operates on compressed natural gas and that works for trucks. It's a really good fuel. There are a couple of cars that are available, like the Honda Civic GX. And these vehicles come in a variety of styles and are as sleek as you would find in any traditional vehicle showroom. I've been interested in them for a while now, and uh, now that it appears that we're sort of reaching that point where 
there's a good variety available. I'm, I'm excited. This is the first fully electric SUV made by Toyota. It can go from zero to 60 in seven seconds and on a full charge, about 103 miles. A lot of get up and go. And people seem to be buying into the idea of alt cars. The price tag may be a bit higher, but experts say in the long run, it will save our planet. Right now, energy stations around Santa Monica are limited, but as more vehicles hit the road, opportunities of getting the power you need is expected to grow in the city, especially since California is leading the way of plug-ins sold in the past few years. The city plans to buy several of these vehicles, which in return will keep our air clean and save taxpayers a lot of cash on gas. We're able to buy that cost down with grant funding and other money that's available to us as a city, so we're able to offset that. The general public is available to get federal tax credits. A smooth ride ahead for the city that's changing its carbon footprint one drive at a time. For Santa Monica Update, I'm Rick Boone reporting. Next year's 2014 Alt Car Expo happens September 19th and 20th. Go to altcarexpo.com and register to attend. The Santa Monica Police Department has been awarded a $140,000 grant from the California Office of Traffic Safety for a year-long program aimed at preventing deaths and injuries on our roadways through special enforcement and public awareness efforts. And the Santa Monica Police Department has also been awarded an additional $45,000 grant from the same office for an anti-DUI program to combat impaired driving. Beginning January 1st, a city permit will be required to conduct fitness or athletic instruction, classes or camps for compensation in Santa Monica's public parks or at the beach. Permit applications are now being accepted. Permits will be issued by size of group and location with specified days, times and rules. Additional restrictions will apply for Palisades Park. Application forms and a complete list of rules and regulations are available at smgov.net slash trainers or by calling the Community Recreation Division at 310-458-8300. Come see the best directors of tomorrow, today. The Santa Monica Teen Film Festival is now accepting submissions for the 9th Annual Teen Film Festival to be held on Saturday and Sunday, June 7th and 8th, 2014. The festival accepts any films made by kids 12 to 18 from anywhere in the world in any genre between 30 seconds to 30 minutes in length. Submission is free and multiple submissions are accepted. There are two ways to submit your film online at withoutabox.com slash login slash 6028. You can create a free account and upload your film. This is the preferred method. Or download an entry form from Santa Monica Teen Film Festival.com and read it. Then follow the directions. Submissions will be accepted through 5 p.m. on Friday, March 7, 2014. Selected filmmakers will be informed by April 14. Good luck. Now we have our newest segment that could be your first look at your next pet. Here's Mike Graham with our Pet of the Week. Flint here is a three-year-old tricolor short-haired chihuahua. He's great with people of all ages and other dogs. He's very well behaved and can sit up straight for food. He's been neutered and has received all of his shots. This is Cooper, a playful one-year-old beagle mix. He's friendly, full of energy, and uh, loves kids, adults, and other dogs. He's waiting to be adopted by you. So if you're interested in either one of these dogs or about 20 others, or cats, bunnies, turtles, snakes, or any other animals, then please visit the Santa Monica Animal Shelter, located at 1649th Street. To find more pets like Flint and Cooper, visit the Santa Monica Animal Shelter at 1640 9th Street. Well, that's it for this edition of Santa Monica Update. The holiday season is here and it makes some folks crazy. So take care when you're out and about, okay? Be careful. I'm Keena Chin speaking for all of us at CDTV. Thanks for watching.